Hi, hi all. Welcome everyone to Science Teaching Academy. Today I am with an interesting topic, digestive system. Without food is nothing. As you seen in our last video, what you eat, that you are. Today is the follow up thing of this class that I am going to discuss about digestive system. Actually, human digestive system comprises of two things, alimentary canal and associated glands. Alimentary canal starts from mouth to anus <coughs> and associated glands like liver, pancreas and uh, gallbladder in the liver are all associated with that. And the alimentary canal uh, starts right from oral cavity to the anus. It passes through pharynx, trachea, esophagus, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, large intestine, appendix and anus. <coughs> Let's see one by one. Actually, um, alimentary canal starts with mouth. Mouth is bounded by lips and the lips are covered by heart cells outside but inside it's, it's protected by stratified squamous epithelium. What is the term stratified means? Stratified is nothing but it is layered and squamous epithelium we know it's a soft tissue and internally the mouth is protected by mucous membrane and laterally it is protected by cheeks out exterior interior it is protected by the same stratified squamous epithelium and um, you may be surprised the small muscular tongue it's bounded by 32 teeth but how it is so safe and that muscular tongue is very much useful for two process that is mastication and one more thing is to speech without tongue you can't masticate the food then again I'm asking the question what is the term mastication means mastication is just when you are swallowing food which makes you to feel a taste and makes your food as in a bolus form that's called mastication and the tongue and the posterior part of the tongue is attached to the floral floor of the <coughs> cavity and a small muscular thing which is if you see open your mouth wide I can't open now you may have right so if you open the mouth wide you can find a small muscular piece that is called frenulum is attached to the floor of the thing and that is called and when you see your tongue you may find some small uh, hard hard spots on the tongue in the, that is called papillae means small small papillae and half of the papillae is called taste buds and the two, th two third of this tongue is made up of this papillae only taste buds and a, a whole branch is dedicated to studying about this teeth the BDS we call Bachelor of Dental Studies, right? If you see teeth, it is also of three major parts. And human teeth of mammals, particularly humans, is made up of heterodont. What is the term heterodont? As the name itself implies, hetero means four. And human teeth, there are 32 teeth are there. In the 32 teeth, four types of teeth are there. So it is called as heterodont, like incisor, canine, premolar, and molar. And the formula is 10, 2, 1, 2, 3. Like mathematics having, having some formulas, our dental teeth arrangement is also is made up of formulas. That is 2, 1, 2, 3. It's very quite simple, right? 2, 1, 2, 3 means, as I say, four types, incisor, canine, premolar, molar. It's made up of 8, 4, 8, 12. Means upper jaw and lower jaw. The upper jaw is arranged in the, this fashion of enamel fashion. If you analyze about the individual teeth, means a teeth in a singular form is called tooth. If you look over a tooth, the tooth is surrounded by, is made up of a calci calciferous substance called dentine. Strong teeth, the Colgate advertisement and any toothpaste advertisement you may be seeing. It is, should be protected. Your toothpaste may protect the enamel because they will say, right, that enamel is the outer portion which is protecting this dentine. The whole teeth is made up of this dentine and the teeth, the interior of the teeth is covered by pulp where your uh, nerves and your blood capillaries are flowing through that pulp. That's the connection between uh, teeth, uh, means a tooth or a teeth and your body is that pulp and at the exterior part means at the uh, part is called root canal where your nerves connecting with your nervous system what you how much pressure you want to give if you see a uh, if you see a normal speed what you will do just soften right just a small press is enough 
but if you want to see a hard substance you you will bite a lot that pressure and everything will be passed through this root canal how much thing you are feeling of and some may say a sensitive tooth and all that is felt by this root canal to the brain only the next thing is apical foramen where the root canal opens to the uh, uh, socket actually our teeth are connected to the gums which in a general term or in a sockets of that skull and uh, dentine i have said, i have said about dentine majorly the teeth you can say crown neck and root as a major part now we have finished about teeth then we are going about ma- uh, pharynx actually pharynx is the common point where oral cavity and trach oral cavity and nasal pharynx nasal end and mouth met at a point so pharynx is the meeting point of what you eat and what is what you breathe and elders may advise you elders may advise you do not speak while you eat that's the reason for that have you everyone may be experienced while eating if you are uh, if you are talking you may just uh, get a cough right you may cough instead they may ask you to beat on the top means head what's the reason you know <coughs> the food when passing to this uh, when you are eating and you are sneezing it is stuck cut stuck into the trachea portion even though epiglottis is available to protect the trachea without entering into the nasal region this food may pass into that so to make that food into flow in, again to the to this uh, food pipe called esophagus uh, this pressure may be helping that and the water may be helping that and trachea we may be aware is it's a region starting region for the entire new uh, new system called respiratory system uh, trachea in a general term is called as windpipe then pharynx pharynx flows through esophagus let's see about pharynx now sir venga venga along with the pharynx there are three three salivary glands are there before going to the ca- pharynx we may see about what are these three salivary glands the three salivary glands are scattered throughout our oral cavity in which three major things are there that is parotid submandibular and sublingual except parotid other two can be said submandibular and sublingual this region which we make our chin to move na this is cheek and this is chin if you move our chin this region is medically called as mandible so the submandible region that is inferior border of the mandible is uh, on two p- p- a pair of salivary gland is available and parotid parotid is an anterior of each side of the head each side of the head the parotid gland is there and the third one sublingual so what i said is parotid submandibular and sublingual don't worry about my writings <laughs> even doctors may scribble more than that now then that's why we are in this field so parotid submandibular and sublingual so three things are there and uh, this all this saliva salivary glands also having lot of enzymes to degrade uh, microbes and it has lot of things in mastication of your food and then it is followed by pharynx as i said so pharynx uh, as i said is a meeting point between mouth and nasal thing so it will be called it is also again divided into three things nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx as the name itself nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx as the name itself implies where it points into and how it is located nasopharynx is from nostril to pharynx and oropharynx is from subman uh, sorry <coughs> that submandibular to epiglottis and laryngopharynx is from epiglottis to esophagus then we move on to esophagus so esophagus is continues from mouth 
esophagus is continuing sorry esophagus is continuing from mouth to stomach this region is called as esophagus and esophagus lies in the mediastinum of thorax if you see anatomically where it is located it is in a mediastinum means it it belongs to your vertebra the anterior portion having vertebra and the posterior is having trachea so it passes through diaphragm and ends at the stomach and the esophagus has a thick walls and the inner wall is lined by stratified squamous epithelium as we seen in our buccal cavity uh, buccal cavity in the mouth the same stratified squamous epithelium is made up of and the upper and lower end is bound with sphincter uh, for example in stomach they will call pyrolic sphincter and similarly esophagus also having a sphincter so that's regulate so there is the boundary of esophagus then we move on to stomach actually stomach stomach is again an enlarged sac that lies in the horizontal if you are having big belly they will say you are having big stomach right actually that is not the fact the fact is about the fat surrounding that stomach the stomach may be a, a sac enlarged sac where your food storage happening and the, it will be lying horizontally and stomach is lying in this position not like this or it lies actually like this stomach and stomach is again contains of three regions cardiac fundus and pyloric i will draw a small picture of stomach so it may be helpful for you to understand oh is a sac like oh like this okay fine so the esophagus will open into that cardiac region this region is called as cardiac and the alternative portion the lying left to that cardiac is fundus and the major portion of the stomach is called as body and the body ends up in the pyloric end so this region is called as pyloric